1975, UN declared it Women's Year. And in October 24th of that same year, to be precise, women went on strike. No paid work, but also no cooking, no cleaning, no child care. Let the men of the island see how they will be able to cope without the invisible work women did every day to keep the country going. Hello, School of the Spirit Bible Institute students. I want to welcome you into this class, Women in Pastoral Ministry and Leadership. One of you women in the church and also in the society. This is a GST course and we talked about it last section. We dealt a little about gender issues and how to breach the barrier. Speaking is Dr. Stella Henry. Come on, let's dive into this course and do it together. God bless you. Are you wondering why UN declared 1975 year for women? Are you wondering why in October 24th, women went on strike? Gender inequality has been an ongoing issue. It has been an ongoing battle. And um, what we're gonna talk about today is not my experience or your experience, but we're gonna look at it from the empirical level, from the empirical perspective. That scientists, they have been working so hard to keep monitoring this gender inequality and then to see what they can do to ameliorate it. Just to brush off on some of the things we did in the um, last section, what is gender inequality? Gender inequality is simply talking about the different evaluation of men and women and also the areas of predominantly women and predominantly men in employment. Gender inequality probably may have worked so hard against women at large. But I tell you what, as you go into it, you're going to find out that gender inequality has as well affected men at some point. And there has been little success in reducing inequality. And also, women are underrepresented in the upper echelons of the organization. And as a matter of fact, the USA, Canada, and the European Union, they converged and went beyond social commentary and explained and offered remedies and these remedies were offered based on empirical analysis last section we discussed gender gaps what are these gender gaps and how are we able to bridge these gaps and some of these gaps that we mentioned one of them is discrimination there is discrimination in the workplace where a man goes to work, a woman qualifies, but a man is being taken. And I tell you what, after several empirical evidence, they know that women are suffering discrimination. As a matter of fact, um, we have been taught to, to say that we choose not to talk about our marital status. Because you go, you go uh, look for a job and they ask you, Stella, are you married? And then you happily go, oh yeah, I'm a mother of two girls. And there's another, there's a guy who is also looking for the position. That position is obviously gonna be given to the guy because they are looking for somebody who will concentrate. And by virtue of telling us that you have two girls, you are obviously gonna be calling in you call out for work. Oh, I can't come to work today because my daughter is sick. I can't come to work tomorrow because my daughter has doctor's appointment. So these are the things they think. And then this is why we have gender inequality. and um, We have this discrimination. Another one is pay inequality. I won't go into details because these, these are things we have already done last year. We also have um, inequality in promotion and hiring processes. And that is why women, uh, a lot of women are very poor. Uh, you know, they, today they have a job, tomorrow they are doing part-time because they need to stay home and take care of activities in the house. And at the end of the day, they have no pension. But a man works, a man stays full-time 
and at the end of the day they get everything that they need to get so these are the many reasons this fight has begun even before i was born and it has continued it has been ongoing and one thing we must mention is that there is sexism hidden in the workplace to leadership I remember last time they were asking, why is it that women who work out there in the secular world, you get to the position, you get to a position of a vice president, but you cannot become the president. And a lot of times they think that these women just shy away. They rather want to go and start their own. So they were teaching women to learn to interact with these bosses so that they can get what belongs to them. So they taught women, one of the things they want women to do is find these big boys and, you know, just inter start a conversation. Some of them go to play golf. Find the places they go to play golf and go meet them there. But some of these women know that that's not a solution. That's a problem. That's a big problem. In 1976, the same Iceland passed the Gender Inequality Act, which outlawed sex discrimination in workplaces and in schools. Today, Iceland has the most gender equal parliament in the world. And they do not believe that there's a woman who does not work. Rather, there's a woman who isn't paid for her work. Globally speaking, 75% of work without pay is usually done by women. That is the same reason a five-year-old five girl would do house chores more than her elder brother. Australian study found that though, um, for instance, in a rich family, you pay somebody to come inside the house and do some domestic work, whatever that is still left a woman does the major part of that work irrespective of what a woman does as a job as employment sometimes women are breadwinners maybe a, a man has lost his job or maybe a man still has a job but a woman has a better job this same woman comes home and has to be the woman in the house you have to come home and change diaper, you have to come home and do the shopping, the laundry, the cooking, the serving, the cleaning. But this empirical analysis is not saying that there are no men who do better than women. There are actually men who do better than women, but empirical analysis, empirical evidence-wise, this is an average woman we are talking about. In India, it has been found that women do the messy, emotionally draining kind of caregiving jobs. For instance, when an elderly person is no longer capable of helping himself or herself, maybe they poop in bed, a woman has to do that job of cleaning. With all this being said, it's been noted that women are the more depressed and depression is prone to dementia. So in my final analysis, therefore, I want to safely say that around the whole world, with just a few exceptions, women work longer than men. In Korea, women work 34 minutes longer than men, and this is on daily basis. So the size of this gap is definitely gonna vary from country to country. In a US study carried out in 2010, it was found that women do 54% of the house chores, while men do about 28%. In Italy, it was found that 61% of women's work are unpaid. In France, it is about 57% unpaid. And all this extra work definitely affects a woman's health. Canadian research in 2016 found that several women, even after bypass surgery, will go back to work, while men 
sit at home and enjoy caregivers. It was also found that single ladies, single women with heart attacks will always survive more than married women. It was also noted that single women receive equal pay with single men. But sadly, when they begin to cohabit, this woman marries that man. At this time, her house chores goes up while the man's house chores will go down. Finally, empirical analysis has it that husbands create extra seven hours of housework for their wives on weekly basis. But remember, there's always an exception to every rule. There are men who still work even harder than their wives. There are women who are just sitting and enjoying their husband's money. But generally speaking, empirically speaking, proven, it is what it is. Um, a lot has been said. Um, I'm just going to really cut it short just to say one or two things about um, women in the church, how we view them in the church. And uh, before I forget, I read this book, The Problem with the Problem. It's very a beautiful book. I also read um, Invisible Women. It is very wonderful book. I haven't found them in PDF. If I find them, uh, but I have really um, included quality material that you just need to look at. You don't need to Google anything. As far as this assignment is concerned, um, just go through the material that I have given. They are very powerful. So, and uh, it's going to cover. I don't want to do a long video, so I'm just going to cut it short just to let you know that you need to examine a verse in its context. And how many things also um, want you to, when, for you to understand a verse, you need to now read backwards. You need to go a bit back to go and see what was said before this particular statement was made. Really? Mary, the sister of Martha, was not in the kitchen. She was rather, you know, getting orientation with the men in the house. And that was what Jesus said kudos to. It is biblical for a woman to preach. And I still want to remember that the Bible says that a man, it is not good for a man to be alone. Why do we now want to disconnect a woman? We shouldn't disconnect a woman. Because women have as well been gifted by God. If men were gifted, women were as well gifted. Women cannot be kept out of religious leadership over a specific letter that was written to a specific people, which is what um, Hermeneutics is talking about. That letter that you, you, that you just read, who was it written to? And then contextualization is talking about application. How do you want to, you know, who are you looking at to put your application? Some letters are specific letters to specific people, Why some other letters are general letters. And this is not one of those general letters. This was a specific letter that was written to Corinthian women. Of course, you cannot see full image of God without seeing both man and woman because he has made us in his own image. It is gender bias to protect a man, to promote a man over a woman. Debra was a judge. Priscilla was the businesswoman. Hulda, a prophet. Phoebe was a deacon. And uh, of course, Magdalene, Mary Magdalene was the one who announced that he has risen. Don't you think Jesus was intentional? It is true, people are saying that, oh my God, the 12 apostles, that um, there was no woman. But then we realized that Junior was an apostle, even an apostle with a difference. And Junior is a female. So I want to believe that Jesus was intentional. One of the problem verses has been 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 26 to verse 40, where Apostle Paul has said the women are to keep silent in churches. They are not permitted to speak. Now going by what contextualization and how many days have taught us 
we want to go back for us to understand this passage we want to go back a bit to go and see what was said earlier and what was said earlier you could see that paul for the second time was saying he was actually correcting those who were speaking in tongues since it was not edifying the church and if he said in that chapter that if a revelation is made to another who was sitting the one who was talking earlier needed to stop you know be silent corinthian women were crazy they were harlots they they were just any any disgusting thing that you could think about they were very bold and um, they they were noisy so if you want to look at it from that perspective that apostle paul was cursing the people the corinthian women then he was cursing the corinthian women and so this remains a specific letter nothing has made it a general letter so if you want to go by contextual contextualization and how many legs going a bit back then one can safely say that when he was saying i do not also women to speak they are to keep silent this is because they um everybody wanted to just prophesy everybody wanted to speak in tongues everybody just wanted to show off just like these people were harlots the apostle paul was really working hard to make sure they understand something about prophetic and that uh, he was really hammering it was for the second time he was warning them i'm gonna stop this video right here but i assure you everything will come in the email I wish you all congratulations once again, Dr. Stella.